Hello everybody and welcome! I am Ketchup and I am Mustard and you are watching the Mortal Kombat X Challenge Cup Finals where we are about to kick off the European portion of what's going to be going on tonight. Yeah, so it's going to be much the same like last month. Um, some have players and just what they're playing for in general. Just to remind you guys and girls at home, what they're playing for tonight is cash money. As always, the Challenge Cup is itself its entirety. It's a series of tournaments that runs alongside the Pro League, but is not linked to it. It's basically for cash. It's a way for players to get competitive experience, to practice for the league, to practice for tournaments, and to play for money. Now, once a month, we have our Challenger Cup Finals, where they play for $1,000 in total. First place takes home 500 You guys have seen this before if you've watched the Pro League. This is Pro League money they're playing for, and it's a way for these players to get a little bit of exposure to see what this kind of play is like. Well, that's what the point is, right? I mean, it's, it's a means to, if you don't quite make the cut for the ESL Pro League Top 8, it gives you a reason to get the experience, and your reward for playing well in this is to finally get the chance to compete for that prize money that you would normally get in a weekly league. You just don't get placement points for it, but you still get the cash. Yeah, of so, course. once again, we have a social media correspondent, uh, but more importantly tonight, to talk you all through, basically, what's going on in the upcoming weeks. Thank you very much, Ketchup. As you guys know at home by now, I'm Mo Sasanak, and I will be doing your uh, social media correspondent this evening. Remember, if you want to keep up with anything Pro League related, especially with the finals being so close now, you can follow us at ESL Mortal Kombat on Twitter. If you want to get involved with the conversation tonight, you can use the hashtag MKXChallenger. And also, we have another raffle up for grabs tonight is a couple of these lovely MKX t-shirts. So you can go to esl.gg forward slash MKXComp to register there. Also, if you want to get uh, your hands on uh, some of the tickets for the finals, they're selling out very fast, you can go to esl.gg forward slash MKX finals to grab one there. Back over to you guys. Cool. Thank you very much, Sasanak, as always. So, season finals, if you guys are in the LA area for June 11th, do come down. We're going to be there. The best players of Mortal Kombat in the world will be there. There's plenty of pro players and popular fan favorites that will be in the crowd. It's worth going to if you're in the area. Obviously, oh, yeah, it, sure. it, was, it was a sold out house last time. It's going to be good fun. Hopefully see you guys there. But what are we doing today? What is the bracket? We have four players from Europe clashing. We have Born Through Ashes versus Azadamazi. Game number one. Up, up kick spam and Azadamazi again, I suppose, <laughs> in our second match. But that we tongue twister. Up kick spam we saw last time. Azadamazi we saw last time. But that's it's Mr. Aquary. It's up kick spam versus Mr. Aquary. I yes, of course. So it's, it'll be up kick spam versus Mr. Aquary. Slight adjustment in the brackets. We'll make sure that's fixed. Not a problem. Sorry, guys. We'll get that fixed, but it's going to be Mr. Aquary versus Upkick Spam. So that's probably going to be, I believe, Shaolin Kung Jin versus Sonya Blade. Uh, but game number one, uh, we know that um, Azadamazi does play A list Cage, right? We know Alien and A list. Alien list. That's his, that's yeah, his character. Yeah, well, it's, um, it's kind of like we, we've seen him use Alien a couple of times, but I, guess, I think like the main, the, the kind of go to comfort character is A list. Born Through Ashes, although the name rings a bell, I'm not really sure who they play. I don't think I've ever seen him actually play MKX. Now, you said before, it's a name we've seen before, but I've never seen him play myself, so I really have no idea how to call it. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where it's kind of like, normally we can kind of break down who we think you know, they're going to use or what the matchup's going to be like, but the reality is, Born Through Ashes, we know very little about this guy. So there's going to be a lot of it on the fly. Obviously, he's here in the Challenger Cup Finals. You know, only him and, and three other players are here, so it's going to be... It's going to be a good set of matches. I mean, uh, when you have, whenever you, you kind of come across someone that you're not too familiar with, you kind of hope they're going to pick some kind of crazy, funky, like a Kenshi. Well, or... I, I, I always find it to be quite um, quite a, a nice optimistic opportunity, though, because to, to be in the Challenger Cup, like, anyone could enter them, but to be in the final, you have to be one of the top places of the month, right? So these guys have spent a couple of weeks of playing well and placing well, and that's why they're here. So it's, it's a fair assumption that they're going to have you know, a, a base level. It's just when I don't even know what character they're going to pick, it does excite me because there could be anyone on the board. Like, obviously, we see loads of Takeda. We see loads of Johnny Cage now. Uh, we see a bunch of Molina. We still see, obviously, our, our Sub-Zeros and our Kotal Khans and whatnot. But there are a lot of characters that we don't really see that are quite interesting. But I think sometimes it's not necessarily because a character is more... Uh, it's that they're, they're truly unviable characters. Oh, Devora! That's where I know the guy's name. I've played him online before. Brilliant. Well, there I you go. fought this guy because he has he has a he has a very tidy Devora. So it's gonna be Alien versus Devora. I have never seen this matchup in my life. I mean, I I wouldn't know how to call it because Aston has has gone straight for Alien. I don't know if he's specialising in Alien now or whether he just prefers it for the matchup, but. Swarm Queen's one of the, I'm not going to say slept on because the community knows how good she is, but she's a very dangerous threat. 
Well, obviously, shoutouts to uh, Honeybee. Did very, very well at Tori Yukon recently. Big damage, though. 38% just like that. Corner carry. There's that 50-50 into the tail. All oh, goes in for the reversal. Very unsafe on block, but I mean, it's it has been recently buffed, so it starts up quicker. Now, let's have a think. I mean, like... This is definitely where Born Through Ashes wants Azadamazi to be. Um, because it's the matter is, keeping him in the corner, that's kind of where Devorah wants. Oh, nice bait! That's going to be big damage. Oh, unfortunately, I say that. There is no stamina, so that sucks. That would have been big, big damage right there. Especially meatless. That's kind of one of the benefits of Swarm Queen Devorah. Oh, no! Goes in for the jump in as well. Oh, my days. I mean, that, that was risky. Bet it all on the anti-air attempt. Didn't work out. Full combo punish. Both mids are going to collide there. I like the use of jumping back on, on, on prediction of the forward 1-1, one, because one, in that range, like that, that's going to be Devorah's go-to. Oh, misses the cancel. Oh, is it going to miss that one? That's going to be good, big damage right there. Let's not forget, Devorah's always going to go for the insect lift. Azadamai is going to disrespect it. Press the button. He had a full combo for his trouble. Hard knockdown into another insect lift. That kind of panted tech. Hard knockdown. And that's one of the things. If you're actually not ready for Devorah to drop that cancel, she's actually going to be plus on block anyway, especially if the insect grenade connects. Oh, a nice change for the down one. Oh, we'll give the comeback, but that's going to be a clean, I assume, punish with the forward one. Oh, that, that's unsafe. That's definitely unsafe. But if he had more health, I'm sure that would have been a forward one, too, into a meter burn grenade. Oh, that was nice spacing from Born Through Ashes. Ready with a 1 1. Good stuff. I don't know what Azdamazi's trying to do, but he's eating a ton of those. Oh, wonderful read with the armor. Oh, doesn't get max damage, though. Cuts it short at uh, 22%, but not too bad. I think it might just be matter of trying this. Oh, and there we go. Run straight into it again. Deceivingly large hitbox on that attack. Oh, wow. That exchange. Oh, that must have been an execution error. I'm not sure if we tried to throw the uh, insect grenade right there. It isn't going to come out. Now, that's always going to be kind of one of the banes of Devorah. Um, although the forward 1-2-1, one, one, I think that's the uh, string. When it, when, it, when it connects fully, it will jail the opponent. Oh, not quite. Oh, doesn't get it. And there's the overpositor strike just to finish things See, up. See, one of the tricky things in this matchup, I was about to say, is um, when she does the, the three hit mid string, it, the, the last Board hit. Forward 1 1 2. Is ex uh, it's extremely plus on block, right? The, the, the entire string will jail into guaranteed stuff after. However, you can take the third hit. Deliberately get hit by the third hit, it will knock you back. She can't really get anything if she predicts that, apart from maybe what? I guess like an overpositor strike, a regular one, on she, prediction, she, but it's unsafe. Can, she can turn it into a different special instead. Um, I don't know the extent of what she can get from it, but still, it's it's something you have to, to to know. It's the same way we used to see Scorpion players will go like, you know, two on four into EX Spear or, or prediction. Luke, Luke it's Kang, safe on block. Luke yeah. Kang players will turn it into, uh, or used to turn it into Bicycle Kick. I'm not sure that's something we still do because we haven't seen Luke Kang in, in so long. But it's 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 a mind game. But you have you have to show your opponent you're willing to take that hit to get out in order to make them switch up. Because once you've started taking the hit and they start doing different specials after it, you then put yourself in a situation where you can be like, okay, well now it's not as much of a threat. It's not as important. Now that was really nice use there, knowing Azamazi was going to press a button on block and then try and do something else. Uh, Born through ashes, just waiting for the down one, then going answering back with the one 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 cancel full combo. Oh, back dashes on prediction, but is going to eat the the, uh, the the roll anyway. Big hitbox on that move. Uh, Ash is sitting pretty at three bars of meat right now. Get at least get the block pressure. Now that's the sequence right there that's completely guaranteed if Azdamazi blocks it. Oh, good hit confirm. All those four dashes just to push Azdamazi further into the corner and then allow the pressure to continue going. But I, I wonder how comfortable Azdamazi is in the matchup though, because surely every time he goes into the uh, every time he goes into the you know the the, the insect lift off of uh, two on two. In theory, that's a forward one punish every time, because it moves him forward, right? Or at least he's going to get a dash. Like that, that is a full punish if you're ready for it. But he's trying to jump, he's trying to do other things. Oh, Azamazi not respecting it. I don't know if he's familiar with this matchup, but he's, he needs to hold that mix-up. Either that or get hit deliberately. Oh, yeah, nice armor. sped up reversal. Oh, that's going to be a full hit confirm. All those forward dashes again to guarantee the corner pressure. Nice cancel again. Standard BNB. Oh, goes in with the plus frames. Plus frames again. Gets a forward dash, though, so can't really do much with it. Nice confirm. Uses, uses a bar. Not quite sure why you use it with that. Just to get a bit more damage, I suppose, because I guess he is quite near chip damage territory now, but that's going to be it. That, that down one. Low. That was a clean down one. You you know he read a grab right there. Yeah, I mean, it's plus on hit. I mean, that, that, that acid is plus on hit. But if you're going to go for a grab or something, and then you do a low profiling normal, bam. 
straight in. But again, that sort of leads us into purposefully neutral ducking territory. If you know a grab is guaranteed, and you're going to try and do something dangerous uh, by trying to attack it. Basically, if 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 you know if you're in a situation where well, you're the down one that was all it took really, the no, down no, one no. in that situation. But like if 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 you're in hit stun and a grab is possible, only a few things in the game put you in that situation. But if you know a grab is guaranteed, why? I don't know, mate. I guess the down one worked because the, the the grab was late. I guess if the down one managed to work in time, it would it would have been mistimed, late. I believe. I yeah, believe it would have been mistimed. Now the th here's this thing, right? One of Devora's kind of biggest drawbacks is her extreme lack of a, a really good reversal. So she has got the the slightly fast. I believe it's 13 frames now. It's uh, faster than it used to be, but it can it can still get armor broken by really quick armor breaking properties. Johnny Cage being one of those characters that has those kind of attacks. Uh, I, as far as I'm aware, I do believe that apparently this is not a particularly fun matchup for Devora, especially considering how easy it is for Johnny Cage to get in. But Asad Amazi isn't showing a, a huge amount of matchup knowledge in this, so it, do you reckon that's even a factor? Yeah, well, a, a matchup is only really, really bad if the opponent knows how to exploit your character's weaknesses in that specific match. If they're unfamiliar with the match, it's not going to be a bad matchup because they're going to play it, like, not the way they should, if that makes any sense. Nice knockdown, Astamazi gets it, but oh no, he drops his first confirm. Oh, and he gets the meat of a nut punch. That could be what he needs to start the sequence. Could be. No armor available. This is going to be all pressure. Yep, Born to Ashes tries to block low, gets hit by the run cancel into the forward two. Bam. Nice, Astamazi manages to, uh, to put around on the board. He's coming back in a little bit. One more and he's going to take it to 2-1, but he has to be super careful. Oh, no, catch him trying to throw Blanche. Not today. Nice read. Is that full punish? Yes, it is. Max damage. Now, this is corner damage for Devorah. This is going to get pretty tasty. She's going to get that knockdown into intercept. I mean, like, on whiff, it's fine because you risk getting hit. On block, I mean, plus on hit, full combo. Oh, he still good took damage. Punish. He still took damage from the lift itself, which at this low health, that is going to add up. Goes to the throw, a little bit of damage, 35%. Oh, tries to do a meatless shadow kick, which takes Born through Ashes to a clean match point. Oh, nice neutral jump. Good corner repositioning, putting him straight back in. Another amazing read there on the NJP. And again, putting him back into the corner. That's 50% clean, just As like that. Azadamazi does not want to block on wake up. Down four, down four, down four. Falls for the overpositor strike. New jump kick's not going to connect. Oh no, that's not a trade he can take. Oh, here we go. There's that four three. Oh, oh this gets could be the good. head again. Got caught by that already before. Twice now. Uh oh, wonderfully timed grab. <gasps> oh, she jumped. Now. You know what surprises me the most about that final, final, final exchange? Born Thrash is crouch blocked. Two mids. And both projectiles went over her head. They're mids, aren't they? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure they're mids. It's not That's everyday. why people use them. That's one thing that Devorah has going for her, is that tiny, tiny hitbox. Oh, you know what, actually? Maybe it's the fact that, you know when Johnny Cage players, they, they, they do it up close. Uh, they do it on block. You know, sometimes you can neutral crouch on prediction of the force ball. Yeah. I'm not sure they, act, they might not be mids. And that might have been why she was able to go so low under them. Yeah, but to see a character crouch block and not be forced to block a fireball. She's very little. Yeah, but you know what I mean? That, that's kind of it. Like, normally, if you see a fireball and you crouch block it, the fireball hits you, you, ch you take chip damage. And that's all Astamazi was looking for. Born Thrush is crouch blocked and it went over his head. Now, that is that is knowing your hitbox that's and what very you can get away with. It. That's a very fortunate situation. I was so close. He was on match point. If he can keep it together, he's still in this. I wonder what Johnny Cage can do as an answer for that puddle. Because I mean, like, surely forward three. I was about to say, characters that have advancing. I mean, it's uh, A list. It could be forward three into whatever he wants. Characters that have advancing uh, quick normals. If you see that lift on block, you can punish that. Like, Triborg, for example, can forward one three or forward four three into anything as a guaranteed punish if you see that on block. And you can do it on reaction. It's not prediction. You see a, uh, you know, lower her hands and go for the puddle. You know the puddle's coming. But just like that, Born through actually is looking to take himself to a nice clean match point once again. Aston Mazzi has a bit of a, yeah, just like that, uses the bar. That was chip damage territory. I like it. It would have traded an armor broker wake up. That was nice. Good use of the armor. Then take that small step back. Nice whiff punish. Knows that Aston Mazzi is just itching to run in for that forward three. Nice down four. Keeping him honest. 
clean neutral jump punch just over the fireball. Oh, okay, catch the board one, that could have been big. I again, trying to jump, and I like that. Knowing he's going to recover in time to get a, a standing one and it crossed up. Well, if you're going to be a Devora player, you bet you're ready for people to always try and jump out of that puddle. But it's not an answer. Jumping oh. out of the puddle is not a way out. He's going to get that down one out of the 111. Tries to armor. That's definitely not the answer. As Damazi, here he goes. Gets the nut punch. Oh, catches him not blocking low. This could be a nice comeback situation for Asa Damazi. Oh, he's still alive. Oh, red Johnny kick. Oh, forward three. Just that, that victory literally fell through, born through the Ashes' fingers so bad. But again, he's, he's on match point twice. And this will be the third round. He's been on match point. Unfortunately, he just can't seem to quite clutch this one out. Oh, it's a straight up 4-3, but Asa Damazi, no stamina. Throws him into the corner, knows that the corner is where he's going to win this game. Oh, wow, that nice delay wake up to get in between the string. Oh, oh tries to add a cross up. Full combo, oh no, that's going to hurt big time. He's going to go into nut punch, that's going to be jailing into some kind of mix up afterwards. Gets the down, it does get it. Born yep. through ashes is just letting this set completely escape him. He just he can't he can't finish it off. He gets to match point and he just can't can't take it from that point. I would like to know how Devora has has put bullet holes on Johnny Cage. They're clearly not bullet holes. They're clearly just puncture marks. They look like bullet holes. Dude, she stabbed him loads. Maybe they should be bigger. That's like a the... significant amount. He's got a nice nasty graze on his elbow as well. He'll be alright. We'll go back into the match in a few seconds. But still, can we talk about this three game comeback? This this, this is the this is just the the glory of being able to play multiple characters. Because you give yourself a situation where is if you're playing one character and you're just getting straight rocked, like it's just not working for you, you give yourself that option to swap. And, and have an easier time. And this is exactly that. What's going on here is that Ashes has amazing sequences of rushdown, but then that one hit that Azdamazi gets, which re reverses the momentum and puts him in the corner, he just gets mixed until the rest of the round. Like, he has not, we, we talk about, that's actually the weakness of Devora. Her weakness to deal with extreme rushdown, we're seeing it. Born Through Ashes is winning when he's not having to defend. The second he's having to defend, you can see right now he's having a big, hard amount of trouble getting around it, and just like that, getting mixed over and over and over because he is now the one on the back foot. He's not the one rushing down. But that really, oh, and no profiles as well. I'm not sure if that was fortunate or not, but... Still, even if he didn't know that before, he knows it now, and that's a clean match point. That's this the is not a great situation for Born Through Ashes. I mean, like, put in the corner against A-List, you're going to get armor broke all day, you are going to build Breaker, but now if you if you opt to use break, I mean, using it late, you can tell even in the middle of that combo, he wasn't sure if he wanted to spend it. Nice stagger into the grab. Not throwing him towards the corner, which is interesting. Nice hit, confirm. All he could do when he sees that connect with no bar. Block pressure. Oh, Asamazi pressing buttons. Doesn't confirm, and that's going to be a clean armored counter poke. Corner positioning again. We saw this before in CIS. One more hit, and Ashes is going to be going into the loser's bracket. Is there that we game? go. Is that game? Yep, full combo. Absolutely guaranteed death. Ouch, and born through Ashes. Let's it completely escape him. Asamazi clutches it out with a 3 2 full on three game reset. It's born through Ashes. Very impressive. That was indeed. I mean, it's kind of like it's a mixture of the fact that I think Asamazi. A really, really good call going back to Johnny Cage. It's always a comfort pick. I, we, we actually see this almost all the time where Azadamazi goes for Alien first and then loses quite badly and then changes to Cage. It, it seems to be a matchup thing because he clearly didn't know a great deal about the Devorah matchup. Like in the last game, he just he got his game going. Pressures, cancels, well, all when that you, good when stuff. When you play a, a character as aggressive as Johnny Cage, you kind of have that luxury of, even if you're not 100% familiar with the matchup as such, if you at least acknowledge that the defensive game of this character is not very strong, at least if you get something on block, you can do you. You know, you can make the most of it with your character. Yeah, exactly. Like The second I get something on block as Johnny Cage, I know that unless they have specific ways out that I need to know about, I can generally kind of do A-list against this character. And Devora is one of those characters, matchup knowledge or not. So, Born Through Ashes, still in the tournament, uh, much like the other Challenger Cup Finals, this is a double elimination four-man bracket, which means that there'll be a winner's bracket and a loser's bracket, or a lower bracket, if you prefer, where if you lose in the winner's bracket, everyone starts in the winner's bracket, move down to the loser's bracket. If you lose again in the loser's bracket, you're out. So, Born Through Ashes has lost in the winner's bracket. He's now in the loser's bracket, where he will fight the loser of STB's Mr. Aquari and upkick spam. The winner will go to winner's finals, who will play against Asadamazi. It's, Boom, there's your breakdown. It's basically, yeah, well executed. It was basically just, it was basically just a means to give you a second chance. You know, it's there's four players in this tournament. 
these guys are still playing for cash. Bear in mind, you know, this is kind of like their reward for, for being consistent in the Challenger Cup. Let's not forget the Challenger Cup. It's, it's, it is it's, a means... I'll, I'll let you carry on. Oh, sorry. It's, it's, it's a chance to play for Pro League Cash, right? That, yeah. that, that's fundamentally what it's about. Well, that's what it is. I mean, if you don't quite make it into the top eight of the Pro League, you still have the opportunity to play for the cash, get the crucial experience that would, you would use for the Pro League, and your reward for being consistent... And play on the stream. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just it's it's making yourself known, right? It's it's making sure everyone can see you play. I mean, I mean, it, us, you know, we go. I've heard of Born to Ashes, but I've never really seen him. We now see him play. Oh, he's that Devora player that we see online. Like he's he's a, a really really strong player. And again, that downfall low profiling. It, the downfall took the armor as well. That it was that was really good. That was a really scumbag nice situation. Johnny Cage. You call, you call it a scumbag. It's it's just you know you know right. That that normal goes low. That's why it caused Jason so many issues for so long. It probably still does. for the longest time that downfall was the bane of Jason's existence. It, I mean, it, just, it, it probably went still is under everything. Poor guy. Of course. But next match, upkick spam, Mr. Aquari. I assume Shaolin Kung Jin from upkick spam, and Aquari's probably going to go demo Sonya. We know now. One thing I want to talk about, uh, Mr. Aquari. We saw this guy a lot in season one. Very, very online cover up Sonya. Um, this is his first, as far as I'm aware, his first like super serious fighting game that he's really, that he's really. Yeah, this is this is the first fighting in. game that I think Aquari has taken to like a competitive level. Yeah, sure. And uh, obviously, season two, he tried and unfortunately failed to to really make a splash at all. Season three, however, my word, he is he has done work, and here he is in the Challenger Cup finals playing with some cash. So he's very he's he's turned a lot of heads around. People like kind of up and down about. What they thought of him as a player in season one, season two, obviously the the, the naysayers come around and say, "Yeah, see, now now better players have come along." He but made in season, season three, season, three, season sure. three, he's just turned that all around and said, "Nope, I am good, and here's why." And he just takes it to these players over well, and over. While again. we get this match set up at the moment, we're going to talk about the matchup that we're probably going to see, which I believe up, up kick spam. I mean, I guess kind of proofs in the name. Uh, he he plays Shaolin Kung Jin. We called it last month, and we were right. It was great. We were like, you know, what, what other characters in the game have up kicks? You have Cassie Cage has an up kick. Kung Jin has an up kick. I mean, Jax has Jax an up, has knee. up knee. If that, if that counts. But either way, I mean, it's it's going to be Shaolin versus Sonya. And I, I, I do strongly think that I think Kung Jin does quite well. Um, we've known that uh, I think Aquari has actually lost to Kung Jin players in tournament in the past. Uh, I think it's just the natural range, the limbs, the ability to kind of shut down jumps and stuff like that. I mean, Kung Jin actually does that very well because you've got neutral jump punch, natural range, armored reversals, up one. I mean, the hitbox of up one. I mean, that's going to catch Sonic out of the air every single time. Cool. So before we get into our next match, we're going to chuck you guys over to social for just a few moments. Who's going to talk you through what you can get involved in on Twitter for the next couple of weeks. Yes, guys. So with the finals coming up, it's all going to get very exciting. So remember, if you're on Twitter, follow us at ESL Mortal Kombat. You can see brackets and everything else that they post uh, to do with the Pro League. If you want to get involved with our conversation tonight, as always, you can use the hashtag MKXChallenger to talk to us as the league is going on. We also have another raffle tonight, a couple of these lovely Mortal Kombat t-shirts up for grabs. You can go to esl.gg forward slash MKXComp to register there. If you can and you want to get your hands on uh, one of the tickets for the season finals, they're selling out fast. Make sure you pop over to esl.gg forward slash MKS finals to buy one there. Cool. So, I mean, like, we're getting this match set up. We're just getting the guys in the King of the Hill. So thank you very much for being patient with that. But, I mean, it's um, it's been quite a ride for a query. And as like you said, he's come a long way. But I think it's it's Demo Sonya, right? I mean, this character has evolved quite significantly. I mean, the tech monsters out there that have been kind of evolving demo, looking for reload combos, safe reload options after knockdowns, like block strings, new combos in general, like ways to kind of capitalize on it. The second we've kind of seen all this tech kind of explode, no pun intended, um, when, you know, the character has evolved so much beyond, I, I guess, kind of the Sonya we saw last year. I mean, it's, it's, it's marked over a year since Mortal Kombat X came out. And Sonya as a character, one of the characters I believe has kind of evolved the most in that time. I would say so. I mean, fundamentally, she's always got the 50-50s, but it's, it's it's really when when you take a character and you chuck the element of having to micromanage something on top of that. And also, I'm going to say, I think we're both thoroughly desensitized to puns by now. Because we used to be disgusted and just, just, just despicable about it. And now it's kind of like, I get that. We've kind I of reached that. I think we've kind of reached that point where it's it, it just happens accidentally. And it even when you coin it, is now. It's part of who we are. Now, like I was saying before, it's, it's when you take those characters and you, and you add that element of, of having to micromanage your resource, right? You've Blood got God, Blood God yeah. with the totems, sure. Sorcerer Quan with the spells, um, Sonya Blade. Sorcerer Quan. 
Sorcerer Quan forever. Sorcerer Quan's still good. Forever. Uh, it's still, you still. Know, do, you guys, do you guys know that Sorcerer Quan still has a rune trap? Just not as dangerous, right? Just not as damaging. It, it just took. I just had to go back and find it. I had to go and <laughs> training mode it. I was like, guys, Sector's out. Sorry, Quan. Sit there for a bit. Come back to you later. Pick up Sorcerer again. What's that? Everyone's saying Hex is bad. Everyone's saying Hex Trap sucks. I go into training mode. Find something else. Yeah, but it's 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 not as dangerous. It's it's no, it's, it's, it's still it's still no near as good. It's like it's just three bars for like it's, sixty percent. It's now. way harder to guarantee the brutality instead of three bars for a hundred percent on block. It makes me quite sad because I can't get the brutality. I feel like by Nether Realm adjusting Sorcerer's hex spell, it's, it's it's so much harder for me to forget my skeleton realm brutality. Right. I can't do it no more. If only they let the triborgs turn people into skeletons, this would never be a problem. I'll, I had my fingers crossed. I was like, oh, these guys have to turn him into a skeleton. I think the closest we have is like, what? Sector, probably, where he, he blows you up into half a skeleton. Half a, a magma skeleton. Yeah, kind of counts. Kind of have to make do. So who do you think, out of Upkick, Spam, and Aquary, who do you think has a better chance at dealing with Asadamazi? Because I'm pretty sure we saw Asadamazi and Aquary play last Challenger Cup, didn't well, we? It's, well, you kind of have to think of, of the matchup. I mean, like, if, if Aquary makes it through, I think all, all characters in, in general can kind of do well versus Cage. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm, are we I'm sure? sure? Harry Nightmare versus Irish Mantis, right? Where it was, it was uh, Johnny Cage versus Sonya. Harry Nightmare, it was three-one to Irish Mantis. Irish Mantis being the most dangerous Cage player internationally. Um, I mean, without a doubt, this guy's confirmed already. He's going to LA. You know, comfortable fourth seed, kind of sitting around that area, I believe. Um, with stunt double, garnered stunt double, not Alice. But I think it's, it's definitely a matchup. Sonya does. Uh, I mean, I don't see why she would struggle. But at the same time, I don't see why Cage would struggle. I mean, Cage four three punishing pretty much everything. That's going to be quite a game changer. I mean, I, I'm sure I've seen Asadamazi and Aquari fight before. Like, I'm, I'm sure I have. I can't remember where from. I'm not sure if it was just watching him fight another Sonya player or if it was I watched him fight a cage player. But I don't know. I'm, I'm sure I remember them playing before, but I can't remember where from. It's really bad. But no, I mean, regardless, I think it'll be a good set because, I, I, like you said, Asadamazi is just consistent and Aquari is, is new. He's very... Uh, Consistent. Like I said, consistency is where we, we use a lot because you need it, especially at this point in the league, but especially for the Challenger Cup when you're looking to make two Challenger Cups back to back. Yeah, well, it's all a matter of trying to kind of, um, well, I think in a matchup like this, it's just kind of remembering stuff, yeah. seeing, seeing what a player loses to, and then kind of remembering that and going, well, can I avoid that? Or if you're the person that actually plays a character, like, for example, like if you're playing Mr. Aquari, you'll watch Harry Nightmare, because if Harry Nightmare is beating people that you don't beat, you'll kind of look at that and go, well, what was he doing that I wasn't doing? And there's a lot of homework to be done. Right, while we try and get our lobby set up, guys, be with us in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. We're going to go to a quick break while we try and get this match set up. Peggy 18. The time has come. To face you in Mortal Kombat? To teach you respect. Liu Kang, the champion of Earthrealm. Orphan at a young age, Liu Kang was raised by Shaolin monks who trained him in the ways of the spiritual warrior. Having defeated Shang Tsung and Shao Kahn in Mortal Kombat, Liu Kang is ready for any fight with Fists of Fury and Dragon's Fire. <laughs> Let us get to know each other. In the Duelist variation, Liu Kang changes between light and dark metamorphosis, altering the properties of his projectiles. In the Dark Stance, Liu Kang's dark sphere can stop on command, trapping and juggling your foes in the corner. In the Light Stance, Solar Flare, back forward X plus right trigger, is best used to juggle your opponent. Choose between the searing damage of light, the setup potential of dark, or a combination of both. Simply too fast. I will show you hell. Liu Kang ignites the fury of the Shaolin in the Flame Fist variation. Use Shaolin Inferno, down down X plus right trigger, to quickly buff Liu Kang's punching attacks and extend combos. His new enhanced special attack, Windmill Flurry, is a great armored launcher that can be canceled into another special. The potential chip damage of Flame Fist punishes any foes who choose to block. Use Liu Kang's mobility and quick normal attacks to punish those that choose to flee or attempt reversals. I am far more than mortal. The Dragon's Fire variation encaptures the Liu Kang legacy with high pressure play and ferocious fireballs. 
Liu Kang's Dragon Fire can be dash cancelled to extend combos and push your enemy to the corner. Keep up the corner pressure with Liu Kang's fast normal attacks and Dragon Fire cancels. Keep in mind your opponent will attempt to escape the pressure. Change the tempo of your offense to capitalize on your opponent's mistakes. The strength of Liu Kang rests on safe pressure. Use Ankle Snap, down A, to poke at your opponent, allowing Liu Kang to stay on the offensive. Whether you choose the adaptability of Duelist, the raw damage of Flame Fist, or the versatility of Dragon's Fire, Liu Kang has an answer for any challenger. Shatter Bones for the Shaolin with an X-Ray Finisher. and go from Enter the Dragon to Release the Kraken with a Brutality. Liu Kang, think again. Liu Kang wins. Lead the charge with Earthrealm's defender, Liu Kang. Peggy 18. I fear no gods, Raiden. That is why you shall lose. Raiden, the Thunder God. Charged with the protection of mortals, Raiden has led Earthrealm's warriors to crucial Mortal Kombat victories against ruthless invaders. Wielding godlike power, Lord Raiden unleashes his fury through lightning storm attacks and electrifying pressure. Once known as a stoic defender, he now seeks to obliterate those who threaten to destroy all he holds dear. <laughs> Show me what you have learned. In the Master of Storms variation, Raiden uses Static Trap, placing electrified orbs on stage that connect in a bolt of lightning. Maximize the strategic placement of Static Traps by using different special moves to corner your opponent. On knockdown, quickly place a full lightning trap, down forward B plus right trigger, to punish hasty jumps from the corner or crush your opponent's armored wake up attacks. Lightning cuts through the dark. In the Displacer variation, Raiden can teleport to different stage locations, greatly increasing his mobility and rushdown potential. Use Fork Lightning, Back XB, in combination with enhanced teleports to extend combos and maintain superior stage positioning. Keep in mind Raiden can teleport in front of or behind his enemy, allowing him to continue the onslaught in the corner or bring the fight back to center stage. Your insolence will be punished. Raiden's fury is unleashed with high pressure play and new combo strings in the Thunder God variation. His special move Lightning, down back X, can now be dash cancelled, allowing him to extend combos and continue the assault. Watch for the orb to pulse in Raiden's hands before inputting your run, and close the gap between your opponent with Distant Thunder, YXB. Overcharge Raiden's normal attacks by holding down the last input in a combo, effectively juggling a trapped opponent. Be gone, destroyer! Raiden's mix-ups are most effective in the corner. Utilize his special move Shocker, down forward Y plus right trigger, and Electrofly, back forward A, to keep positional advantage in the fight. Curb your opponent's temper with some shock therapy. Today's forecast, victory with a chance of brutality. Do not provoke a god. Raiden wins. Safeguard Earth Realm with the electrifying Thunder God, Raiden.
Welcome back, folks. We are Ketchup and Mustard, and we are here. We're going to go straight into our winner's final match. We're having some issues with upkick spam right now, so Mr. Aquari has advanced into the winner's final, uh, where he will fight off against Asa Damazi, who we just saw make a really clutch three-game sweep comeback against Born Through Ashes. He was on the ropes, two games down, quite convincingly, Devora versus Alien. He was showing a lot of matchup unfamiliarity, just a lot of discomfort in general, made the switch to A-list against Devora, and just, just... Down, down on match point multiple times, yet really managed to bring it back in a convincing way. And here he is in winner's final. Well, it was levels of clutch, really, being able to kind of keep it together in this kind of situation. And it's kind of a good thing that we talked about this matchup right beforehand, where it's 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 kind of, it, we are probably going to see what we knew we'd see, which is going to be either Alien or Johnny Cage versus Sonya Blade. I mean, Aquari has only ever used Sonya. Um, the only sort of difference comes from whatever variation that uh, Aquari is going to go with. So it was cover ops and special forces back in the day. Um, I believe that's the variation. God, you see it so little, I can't even remember. I mean, spe Special Forces is definitely... I've heard it called one of the most underrated variations of the I game, get special we just forces, don't see it. I get Special Forces and Spec Ops mixed up because it's just it's Cassie and Sonya. I did early, especially when we saw a lot of them both. Back in the day. We don't really see much of either of them nowadays. We've seen Sonic Fox no. pull out Spec Ops a little bit, but... That's about as much as we see of her now. Well, it's like, um, I think with Sonya, it's an interesting thing. Where she, I, you, you can't really turn around and say that any of her variations are considered weak, uh, weak or bad, because I think as a base, Sonya is a very fundamentally strong character in the game. Uh, it's just kind of like, she's one of those characters that uh, the, the, the variations that you choose kind of just add an extra flavor to what is already a very good character. Yeah, so you've absolutely. got demolition, grenades, and all that stuff on top of it. Special forces, you know, the drone, the kind of counter break potential of the, um, the kind of lightning ball the jailing and stuff like that and then cover ops just straight 50 50s i mean you can't say no to that and a parry and a stance with more 50 and a full combo parry if it's me bird she just like we, we said this about a bunch of characters but it, it, it reigns true for, for, for them all but she just ticks a lot of boxes in mkx like mkx 50 50s check armor check um wake ups check like good jump ins check like you kind of have all of that options like it, it's not gonna define who you are as such as a character because obviously there's always a player there so te the different tendencies you got to pick up on that that's where it begins to get to the more of the higher level mkx where it goes beyond the character and more okay i know you're playing this character but what are you like as a player what do you do i know what your character can do but what do you do and that's how you make the adjustment and that's how i th that's how i think we see you know people make the clutch plays right in the nick of time we see them make these big set comebacks is when they have that clutch and they have that ability to read you as a player to go i know what your character does but what do you do. Well, that's the level of high-level fighting games. It's beyond the game. Going beyond that point where you know exactly what's going on. And just like that, going straight into Demolition, this is exactly what we thought we would see. As he throws away his first bar and loses the first hit, so unfortunately right off the bat, health is almost the same, but he is going to be down on Beta. But Aquarius can get a nice, big, chunky, damaging combo to open up. Oh, and it gets another overhead. Ever so slightly, though, As was caught on the very edge of that, so the grenade is not going to connect. Now I saw uh, Irish Mantis do a, a lot of lab work with this uh, with this matchup over the last couple of days, and he was looking for options that Johnny Cage had on block because obviously we've, we saw Irish Mantis struggle to take down Harry Nightmare not too long ago, and it was Demolition versus Stunt Double, but it was a lot of Universal Cage stuff that he was struggling with. Oh, that whiff! And it looks like Johnny Cage's down four is a really good way of dealing with the grenades on block. But again, if he delays the grenade and makes it go low, it will catch you. But if you down four early enough, you can stop the grenade. So it's kind of it's a big read. And that's, again, it sort of goes into the higher level mindset, I suppose. Now, Aquari did try and capitalize on that grenade trade, but because the lack of stamina was unable to run in and connect anything at all. But it's still in a good situation. Oh, nice armor. Immediately challenging that stagger. Oh, wow. Oh, so that unfortunate. Here. Oh, drops it. And that's a full punish. Aquari's not going to get away with that. And Astamazi's going to make him pay the price. Let's not forget, when you go for a reload, there is a big amount of time on that animation. Nice anti-air, but I didn't know if you tried to go for the reload. That is going to cost two grenades. The wake-up attack that did not connect. Nice, nice anti-air. Anti One of we used the force. We'll try to chase this one back. Oh, jump in, but no stamina to make the most of it. Get the full confirm. Oh, jump in, punch into dive kick. Lots and lots of backdashes. Astamazi being a very slippery right now. Oh, that down too, just to punish. Brave stuff. I mean, down two when there's grenades under you, but he knew the down two would have won the round, so why not? No choice but to compromise damage. Lovely close grenade just to bait the jump. Oh, that amazing whiff punish. Nice jump back dive kick. So you use the third. Yes, he is going to go for damage here. Oh, no. I'm not sure what that was. Oh, Azadamazi, though, with a very no. sort of preemptive. Oh, no, no. Try to full combo. Doesn't quite get it. Oh, hang uh -oh. on a minute. 
Wait a minute. He's got the bar. Oh, never mind. <laughs> wow. Never mind. Now, that that was quite possibly the most lackluster way to deny a comeback I've ever seen. Well, it means just before it even just dead before it even starts. Get the hit. Hit. Get the hit. Hit finishes. Get the break. Break finishes. Get the jump in, and then just just grenade. Just just normal just normal stun grenade. Not cancelled into anything. Just just in the neutral stun grenade. Well, I think that's that. One of the strengths of Demolition Sonya is kind of like uh, we talk about risk, and well, that's one of the things that Demolition Sonya hasn't really got anything on. I mean, there, there is no real, with the exception of I guess a couple of situations. A lot of it is very safe, you know, doing those strings into a close grenade. It's risky for the opponent to try and armor. And it's risky for them to try and jump because you can bait the armor. The grenade will catch a button press. The grenade will catch a jump. The grenade will catch whatever they try and do, with the exception of armor, which is baitable in that situation. Now, here we see the swap where Asadamazi has started with Johnny Cage and now gone to Alien. So, interesting to see why he's done this and, and if we can play it like significantly more different. Because he's gone to Acidic, so he's obviously got that... Ooh, I also thought, maybe thought we'd see a query get a full combo from that. Well, one thing Azadamazi is going to have in this matchup, which he may not have had in A-list, is that kind of keep away ability, the ability to kind of keep her at arm's reach with that acidic spray. But just at like that, a query knowing that he's going to try and keep away, clean jumping on prediction of the acid, gets it good on the money, nice block on the overhead, but then full combo has to break. Oh, tries to dash, but getting it fully blocked. Azadamazi uses it, uh, no, a query even uses it as a chance to reload. And that's, is that going to be death? That's 33 grenades. Oh, the grenade tech, it still exists! Nice combo there from uh, Mr. Aquari into a clean round number one. What a combo. That was incredible. I l this, that's the side of demolition that I love watching. Like, I understand it's the most frustrating thing in the world to be on the receiving end of, but to see it, like, as a spectator, it's so flashy and so stylish. But, those, but it's so good! Those reload combos are absolutely immaculate. I, I love watching them. Bow overhead. But again, this is the element tries to go in for a reload. That's a full combo and unfortunately doesn't actually get the reload. If you catch her early on in the animation, she will not get the benefit of those grenades. Nice read on the up three. Nice Good trade, yeah. Good trade all day. Good strong round for Asadamazi. Nice. A lot of meter though for a query. A lot of meter. Oh, nice full screen ant. Yeah, has to go for the reload. Oh, gets Almost the armor. armor broke. Almost armor broke that. But I wonder why, if you're going to the armored option, why would you go to the low one when the overhead launches? They're both unsafe. I'm not sure that grenade reload was intentional. Oh, oh hang on! We delayed it as well. As he had time to see. That's two grenades on deck. Two grenades is going to do a significant amount of damage. It's not 70% like it used to be. Oh, on the run under as well. Oh, the damage. Oh, the damage. Oh, jumps up as well. Keeps up safe. 50 50. Blocks right. Gets out the corner. Trip guards, and there's a 50 50. That's going to be game two. Mr. Crazy's going to go up 2 0. Convincing fashion off a nice x ray and a wonderful brutality just to kick the head off the alien. Wrecked. Look at the tail. Oh, well, he means having a. Oh, I don't know what's going on with it. It's having a tail of a time. Oh, man. Hey! Well, look at it. It won't stop. Sweet. I'd give that 10 respects. I would give it 8 respects. I'm with, I'm with the observer right now. That X-ray combo, though. I mean, like, we haven't seen one in a while, to be fair. I mean, that, that X-ray well, hasn't worked I, I think, for, yeah, for a I'm about long say, time. In, in recent tournament matches, that X-ray is quite notorious for not working ever. This isn't season one anymore. People have seen that one before. Unless it's against you at Hype Spotting, of which it worked. Yeah, but I still won that match, so you can say what you want. I don't care. Yeah. Can't harm me, I know. I won that set. That defense mechanism. On what, of winning the match, yeah. That Sweet. winning mechanism. I mean, Aquarius 2 are... Off, off the back of a successful X-ray. I mean, it's it's a big momentum and morale shift. Like, getting it and getting the full damage is is great. But being on the receiving end of it just completely kills your momentum. Well, I, I really, really feel like uh, the, the switch to demolition has has kind of really helped exaggerate the way Aquari wants uh -oh. to play. Oh, Not hang on again. a minute. Oh, he's got it again. Oh, just on deck so many times. Nice reload, getting those guaranteed grenades. I mean, oh. it, if, if anything, extremely stylish. NJP. I mean, that was actually quite a smart call to try and catch some kind of jump, but it isn't going to work out. Oh, the I... delay! We very rarely see Asunamazi actually go for the grab, um, and I wonder why that is. Because it's it's a big threatening option, but not if you never do it. So surely you have to enforce it as an option first, especially against someone that you've not played uh, in this matchup before. One thing you have to be careful about though is that the grab does so much damage, it's almost the most obvious thing that the alien player is going to try and do. Oh, the acid just pixels away from connecting to a query there when he went in for the reload. There you go, just like that. I mean, 31% turned into, what is it, 21% is it? No, 19%. Not quite, because the corner will add the ticks. 
Mid screen is slightly weaker. Oh! But so much green acid on the screen, just like that. Aquarius chip damage rate from death, and that is going to be it. Well, it was almost guaranteed in that sense, because he's, he's far enough away that you can't stuff the, the speed of that charge, because he's too far away to confirm it. But Aquari is still on match point. Not a good trade for Asa Damazi, especially if that grenade connected. Oh, that's good, though. Gets a nice challenge. Didn't Asa Damazi doesn't use the bar to get the recapture dash. I wonder why that is. He never seems to go for it. He might be opting to save it for breakers in case he guesses wrong on those 50-50s. That would make sense. Ooh, oh, no stamina! That. That's going to be a full combo for Aquari. The lack of stamina making that combo drop could be so costly, but here we go. That's going to be three grenades into a safe reload for sure. Oh, no, just opting to save it. Opting to save one grenade. Astamazi gets around the 50-50. Oh, oh no. no, unsafe, but doesn't get the punish. But that's going to catch him anyway. Wow. We've seen this the whole set where Astamazi has seen. Oh, there's the read. Aquari is going to move on into grand finals. What is it? <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Oh. Hold the phone. What? Um, I mean, I respect that. I respect that in every sense of the word. That was, that was just, that was, that was pure. Right, wait, I've got to get it. I've got to get it back. Wait, wait. Right. That was, that wait. was disrespect. That was swag. No, wait, hang on. Good game. Good game. Good game. That was, that was a good game. Good game. Good game. You good stand game, up. Sorry. That's the that's the kind of game where you, you lose to that combo and you kind of literally just go like, just, just shake your hand and you just walk And on. you'll be the smug man. You did it and you're like, <laughs> that was, that was sick though. That was probably... The gr that could be the greatest tournament combo I've ever seen. Teabag mid set. That, that that is the greatest Aquari moment in Mortal Kombat. It is. Oh yeah, that that was his. That and was his forever highlight. will be. That is the Aquari highlight. That's the Aquari bag. Was, Speed bag Aquari style. I was I was I was about to say. And like, it was against the Cynic alien as well. <laughs> oh my word. Who's playing as Sonya? I mean. The community's watching it like yeah yeah you do, do that. Do it in. Do it in Sonya. But right so. Demo's so much fairer. We kind of have to. We kind of have to to recap this match, right? I mean, like, so what we saw. Yeah, it was dominant. That was a dominant. What, what we saw there was a query, basically. Um, <laughs> I think. So I just, I just see him back. Combo, yeah. Like... I mean, it's just. It was an amazing combo. It's an amazing, amazing combo. And then we see. Hang on a minute. Wait. He bags. What's, what's and, then, and then he finished. What's, what's he doing? Then, then he it. finished it. Brutality did it. <laughs> best combo I've ever seen. I'm calling it now. That's the oh. best. Combo, right. Thank so, you, Aquari. Thank thank, thank you for that magic But what, what we saw a lot of... Are we going to see it? Is that is it? No, that's not. It wasn't the final round. It wasn't the final round. But what, what we saw a lot of in this situation was basically Azadamazi, he would block the 50-50. It was almost like actually when we saw Irish Mantis fight against Harry Nightmare. This was the one. Gets the read. Gets the amazing read. So many grenades. Two. Bad. <laughs> it's just... Oh. I, I could watch that all day. I, I could, could literally too. watch that on loop for hours. We it, it needs to make the top plays. And we can. We can loop it. Forever. Aquari needs to win now. Grand finals, win the side. Like, not bad. For sure. But it's almost like when we saw Irish Mantis fight against Harry Nightmare, where um, he would block the mix up and then actually get hit by the grenade, which is kind of a mix up, but not as, as much of a mix up as the initial 50 50 is. You know, it's, it's a matter of am I going to press the button or not? Or am I going to sit there and take the grenade? If I sit there and take the grenade, am I going to kind of get mixed again? Am I going to have to take another one? It's kind of like. When, when people fight Demo Sonia, they don't seem to... I mean, they, they don't want to block that grenade. They, they, they don't want to have to block it because that might jail into more stuff. If they've already blocked the initial 50-50, I mean, they're not going to want to take the next one. Do you know what I mean? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a dangerous thing. Like, Cover Ops gives you the 50-50 into 50-50 uh, special forces. At this point, I'm not too sure what it brings, really, to the table in comparison to the other two. But then you've got Demo, which is just the 50-50s into the grenade. So it's like 50-50s into pressure. So whilst... They can block it, they've still got grenade underneath them, so it's dangerous. Right, so while we get our next match set up, we're going to go throw you over to Mo Sassanak to find out what's going on in the next couple of weeks. Yep, guys, well, as you all know now, the season finals are getting so close, so if you want to follow uh, any of the news and updates that will be coming along with that, you can go up on Twitter and follow us at ESL Mortal Kombat. If you want to get uh, involved with the conversation here with us tonight, you can tweet using the hashtag MKXChallenger. And if you want to be within a chance of winning some of these lovely MK t-shirts, we've got two of these up for grabs tonight. You can go to esl.gg forward slash MKXComp. If you're lucky enough to live close enough to LA and you want to pick up a ticket for the season finals, you need to hurry because they're selling out fast. You can go to esl.gg forward slash mkxfinals to buy one there. Back over to you guys. Now, notice the lucky enough to live in LA because we're in England right now. LA's lovely. It is, and especially at this time of year because it we get sun here and then it balances out with a lot of rain and a lot of wind and a lot of misery. We're the season two finals in the middle of uh, winter. 
And it's, it's cold, rainy. We just done a week in Poland. We where leave it was the plane and ice. The, the windows are all iced over. Snow and, and ice all over the blooming place, freezing place. Go to LA and it's like summer. And I'm like, what is this? And uh, I, I the guys packed like, a coat. Was that a mistake? And the guys are like, oh, it's always like that here. And I'm like, that's pretty interesting. But now, but now season finals being in summer means t-shirt weather. Okay, t-shirt weather maybe. I get, I get to wear this outside. So if any of you guys or girls are, are nearby to the Burbank area, we'll be live at the season finals where you get to watch the best players in the world compete for $200,000. It's going to be a spectacle. You do not want to miss it. We'll be there. Godspeed and Wonderchef will be there. There'll be plenty of pros in the audience as well. You know who else is going to be there? Who? Doc. Yes, of course. Mr. Doc in the CIS. As of about an hour ago. Yeah, as of about like an hour ago, the, the CIS player Doc, uh, the CIS Challenger Cup Finals, uh, for those that may not have known, the CIS Challenger Cup Finals of this month was also a uh, basically a single spot qualifier to the Season 3 Finals. So I believe it was, um, yeah, it was Vladdy 7R, Doc, Flet, Flet, and it was a Vector Man. Yeah, Vector Man, I believe. It was a Wrestler Jacks. Now, th the thing about Vector Man was. We we did a little bit of re we did as much research as possible because if if we see a player that we don't recognise the name of or we do our homework um, don't we? we 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 do our best because obviously like if, if if there's no footage of a player we can't we can't look them up because it's not there but a lot of players and and kudos to any of you players out there that, that have done this in season three a lot of players have used either game DVR or capture devices or like video cameras whatever they've recorded their gameplay they've streamed it they've archived it they've whatever they they record themselves playing now because obviously having the evidence helps when you're going through matches so you've you've got a log you can watch your own games back um you can you can analyze you can see other players and also if you upload it it means other people can watch you so even if you're even if you're not making the pro league and you're not making the top eight and you're not making the live streams there is still footage out there of you playing and in a competitive setting because just because your matches aren't streamed qualifying for top eight doesn't make it any less of a tournament you're still playing in a competitive setting with these players that make top eight every week so when people do uh archive this this, this footage it's really good for for people like us that really want to look up these players and imagine you know that there's sponsors out there looking there's people looking to form teams to find clan mates to find teammates or even just to find friends or other people that play their character that they can interact with and, and, and form a community to, to develop themselves that all happens when you've got access to your gameplay so i really like it when players upload their own footage i think the most important thing is just being able to kind of watch your matches back especially if you lose you know i mean it's it's like um, I mean, there's this, there's this old school saying which I heard. I, heard, I can't, even, can't even remember where I last heard it, but the saying is you either win or you learn. Do you know what I mean? And then that, that, the ability to kind of capture all your games across both platforms, I mean, it's it's only ever going to be useful data for you as a competitor. But Doc, I mean, the, the Takeda player from uh, Russia, uh, started off, we kind of saw him early on in the Challenger Cup last month with Ronin. He actually won the Challenger Cup. He won Cup. Challenger Cup with Ronin. He won well. it with Ronin. He did indeed. Um, and he obviously won this with Shirai, Shirai Ryu. And I mean, that was a really, really impressive showing. I, it's just, Takeda is such a strong character in the game right now. And Doc kind of really making, taking what's good with the character and just, just putting an exclamation mark on it. Like, really, really well played. Well, it's 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 great to see um, because when, 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 when you have uh, characters like Ronin who, who are very powerful but we see obviously we've got Hayate in America and um no oh, there's not really much else it kind of was just Hayate and Ronin okay so we have born through ashes in this lobby already I believe what we're, what we're in there at the moment sorry guys uh what we're doing is we're making sure that these guys are having their buttons ready to go because obviously we have to be in the lobby as well to make sure that gameplay can be broadcast well that's kind of how how it works right in a king of the hill just to be able to spectate Go into that AFK mode, which I love, by the way. Can you imagine how difficult online tournaments would be if it wasn't for the AFK function? Well, it's kind of what has allowed... The AFK mode in Mortal Kombat X is kind of what has allowed uh, tournaments to be broadcast so smoothly, you know? The ability to kind of get the players in the lobby and then go AFK and then just sit there and watch them. I mean, obviously, huge shouts to Pig of the Hut, you know, who does this every single Sunday during the Pro League. You know, Pig of the Hut, amazing player himself, best Kenji player on the planet, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, you know, season one finalist, season two he's, finalist. He's long earned that right, I yeah, think, for that's sure. fair to say. But what he he likes to do uh, every Sunday. I mean, if he gets eliminated from the tournament, it doesn't get salty. It doesn't get you know. It doesn't sort of um, sort of get angry about it or anything like that. He goes straight onto his stream and he finds out who's who is left to play. He finds really hype matches in the bracket and he broadcasts those qualifying matches. So we see people like Raptor, Forever King, Hayate, Gun Show, people like PL. Just loads of really amazing players. So basically, players that might not make top eight, but we can still but, see but them play. This close, so insanely close. And we get to see what happens there. You know, it's not just a matter of, oh, this player got ninth. I wonder how the set happened. Players like Pig allow us to see how that happened. And it's, it's really good, especially as a community, to be able to kind of see 
these really hype matches that we might not, necess not necessarily see on an ESL broadcast. So, weighing in the loser's bracket, we're going to go into some loser's bracket action for you guys uh, as soon as we can. We have Born Through Ashes, who is a player that we've heard a lot about, but haven't really seen as much of. And obviously, like you said yourself at the start, as soon as we saw he picked Devorah, we're like, oh, that's who it is. That's where I've seen this person I'm always before. hyped for some Devorah. Yeah, always, of course. Always hyped for but some we Devorah. can see that. We are going to go straight to our loser's finals. Unfortunately, uh, we are still having issues with upkick, upkick spam, so uh, we are going to move on. It's going to be Born Through Ashes versus Asad Amazi in your loser's final match. The winner will go through to fight Mr. Aquari in the grand final. So, whoever wins this set has to reset against Aquari. So, it's going to be uphill from here, but that's the beauty of the loser's bracket. You have that second chance. Speaking of second chance, I do believe this is a run back. Round it is indeed, and they're on Sky Temple. Thanks. Thanks, guys, for picking Sky Temple. That's great. I mean, it's not a problem for us, because, like, spectating it's the same. But I don't like playing on Sky Temple. I think it's, it's actually, as, as players, I mean, some people are indifferent. Some people don't really like playing on the stage because they feel like it distracts them, but some people really, really don't mind. Oh, a nice hit confirmed, Born Through Ashes. Sitting on three bars already, that's one thing. When you play a very block string heavy character... Oh, presses buttons on Wake Up. That is not how you get out of that setup, and that's going to be a clean 90% and some more corner carry for Born Through Ashes. When you play a very... Oh, and there's that 50-50. Bear in mind, she can run cancel both her overhead and her low for a full count, uh, combo. It's unlikely as the going to spend any resources to try and get out of that situation. Oh, nice whiff. Now, Hello. Now, you've said this is a run back. Obviously, we've got red Johnny territory, but it's... Yeah, I mean, at, at that point against Devora, you've got overpass at a strike, amazing down two, amazing normals it's forward one it's quite hard to deal with a, a, a chip damage situation now you said before this is a run back this set even though the set was 3-2 born through ashes is yet to take a game off as a a-list it was a, it was a straight three game comeback He's going to spend his only bar of meter on the hit confirm, though, so that's going to be a trade. As many still sitting on one extra bar. Insect Lift is going to recover ever so slightly in time, but isn't going to matter. As Damazi going in with a full combo near the corner. Oh, staggers the throw. Goes in for it. Again, like, as soon as you sort of reach, like, and unless you're a foxy grandpa, as soon as your opponent reaches, like, super low amounts of health, throws become really dangerous. Another full combo, and it's kind of like history repeating itself over and over where Born Through Ashes takes the first round, but then Azdamazi wins the next one and then wins the game. Born Through Ashes, if he wants to stay alive in this tournament, he wants a bit more of that, that challenger cash. He has to turn this habit around and finally win a game against the cage. There's a setup, armors again. Ooh, That's actually that what one. we see quite a lot, where um, Devorah players will run cancel the 1-1-1, but because everyone knows it's not as plus as something like forward 1-1-2, They'll actually cancel it into a backdash to try and bait an armor. Yeah, well, especially against Cage, you look for that forward three, but Born Through Ashes sitting at a break. Just if he gets tagged like this, he has got the opportunity to break, but no, Astamazi's going to drop it. Gets a splat from neutral jump kick and an NJP. Oh, not no. quite sure how that connected. That uh, might have been some kind of anti air attempt that he second guessed and ate a full NJP for it. Born Through Ashes isn't that grab, isn't going to do as much damage, isn't going to build the stamina back. Oh, oh no, who read the escape? That drop from Asada Mazzi threw it away. Absolutely threw it away. That was his game. I feel like Born Through Ashes expected uh, Asada Mazzi to try and take the hit there. And that's why he cancelled into Overpositor a strike. He didn't have meter there. He did not have the bar to get increased chip. That would have only have been a jump out read that, although it didn't work and actually was unsafe, I just do not think Asada Mazzi was ready for it. No, not at all. But no, he, he got the cancel. He went for it. He just dropped it. And I saw, I mean, again, I, I hate pointing out, but Flett and CIS, like, we see these players, like, like for example, Flett would, would find himself, like, so, so close to, 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 the, to win in Season 2 and Season 3. But it's just the inability to clutch it out. And that is something, especially at this point in the season, when we're this far into competition, the game's been out for as long as it has, you need that clutch factor now. Like, because if you don't, you can bet your ass your opponents do. Oh, yeah, for sure. No doubt about it. Oh, that instant running, that hit confirm as well. Big damage, I mean, one bar, it's always going to be a comfortable 40% kind of mark. Oh, the run cancel, going in for the insect lift just to get Azamazi blocking and wake up, and then bam, straight in for a 50-50. Oh no, he blocks the first hit, but gets hit by the launcher, not quite sure what happened there. Azamazi's going to be ready for it though, running straight in for the full combo into corner repositioning. Oh, nice anti-air normal, good stuff from Born Through Ashes. Cashes out the damage, chip territory, neutral jump punch, wonderful stuff. Not I quite sure what I said. Yeah, that means the meter burn. It, it, you can only really use armor when you have the health to absorb the hit. A very, very uh, silly decision. Oh, gets the interactable. Good trade for Aston Mazzy, keeps himself safe. Oh, 
They got to remember that insect lift is is really plus on block, incredibly plus on block. So basically, anywhere on the screen, you have to worry about the Devora following because she's got amazing run speed in that forward one. So you have to just be really mindful of when she just wants to get that burst of aggression to just get in. But I mean, in that instance, even though down one's quite a go-to option, is it even a bad thing that Ash is just waiting for the down one? If you block a down one, the opponent's minus. You know, you can go in for a free button press afterwards. Do all that is that good trade? Full, full combo. Breaking almost immediately. You, oh, you know no. Ashes doesn't want to even remotely give Azamazi a chance to win. Oh, goes in for the break. Had to in that situation. A preemptive down two. I'm not even sure if that was unsafe. Tries to punish it, but doesn't get it. Misjudges it. No punish there either. Oh, be so careful. This is down one chip territory. Yeah, oh, guaranteed wow. death right there. Now, that standing one wouldn't have reached if he did a new, uh, just a standard empty jump. So that was really good call from Bold Rashes. That's just on the bluff like. You've left the ground. If you do anything, this this normal is going to hit you. The standing one is going to kill you. And unfortunately for Astamazi, he just he took it. I'm actually surprised we saw a standing one instead of a down two. But either way, it will work. That's a good point. I is mean, he going to go back to Alien? Devora having one of the more uh, infamous down twos in the game. Now he finds himself in a weird position because his alien didn't do very well at all. It was the cage that allowed for the reverse 3-0. So he's definitely gone in for a character change. He's got options to go for Shaolin. Um, now it's it's more of a matter of so, does Born Through Ashes struggle with last minute character changes? Because he did very well versus Azamazi's Cage right there, but it was when he picked Cage off, off the alien. Is it a matter of he struggled versus Cage, or he struggles once he's got comfortable with one character, and then immediately has to fight another one and then adjust on the fly? But I feel like it would be really foolish for us to, to count Azamazi out here, because he was in this exact position last time and he made a three game comeback. Hey, if he's going to do it, he's done it before, he can do it again. Oh, that 1-1-1 one, 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 though, I mean, he just knew that Asadamazi was going to run in and press the button. Very nice. Asadamazi just doesn't respect that puddle. He wake, uh, I'm pretty sure he wakes, uh, wakes up with it every single time he's got that underneath him. Oh, and he's gone for another wake up, but the forward one is going to advance and make that overhead kick miss entirely. That's data as well. That, that, that's Ashes knowing that that's not going to be a go-to wake up for Asadamazi in that situation. There's a wake up backdash. Oh no, he's getting... Oh, nice confirmed. Doesn't quite get the end of it. Safe dive kick. Oh, I... tries to jump after it though. You can't do that against Devora. Another drop from uh, Born Through Ashes. I really, do, I really do sense quite a lot of desperation in the way Azdamazi is playing right now. Like, I mean, just even stuff... I just feel like he's playing incredibly worried. Well, it's like you said before, it's kind of like... He's not showing a lot of matchup knowledge, but with A-List, he was able to really enforce that A-List game before. But now Born Through Ashes, you know, he wisened up to that, he's made the adjustment, and I'm not sure if, if what Asadamazi is bringing to the table with Shaolin is enough. Because he doesn't just need to win this match, he needs to win three games with this Shaolin. I, uh, I'm not entirely sure why Asadamazi is eating so many of those puddles. He's just giving up unnecessary damage. Oh no, full combo has to break. This will be a, this is going to be like 40% damage. He's going to save the bar. He's going to bet it all on this comeback. He is going to get the meter burn chakra, so he is going to get damage potential. Oh, and he tries to wake up out of it again. But he woke up out of it with something that wasn't armored. Big mistake. Down four on blocks. Can guarantee another one. Slowly but surely, this chip damage is adding up. Nice punish, but is this going to be enough? He cannot take chip damage at this point. Any any touch at all from Bond Thrash is going to destroy him. Oh, there's the late wake up. Is that enough? And it goes under with that small hitbox once again. Born through ashes with the sick adjustment against Azadamazi for a sweep of three games to none, where he'll find himself in grand finals, loser side. Mr. Aquari waits for him. That win was almost just completely guaranteed. The, the, the second Azadamazi was basically getting hit by those full screen puddles, you almost feel like he's checked out at that point. Like he's just getting tagged by everything. He's not being patient. Do you think it's an essence of frustration as well? Oh when, yeah, when, of course. When you, I mean, when you get hit by the same thing over and over again. Frustration shows in one's gameplay. Like you, you can see that almost all the time. And in that situation where there's something coming. You, you can see that lift from a, a mile away. I mean, you can block it's, it's, that. It's not a read. It's a reaction. And if it's used in the neutral, like Swarm Queen Devora, she cut. She has two specials from full screen. Neither of them are particularly fast. You can react to both of them individually. It's going to be wasp grenade, or or lift or swarm lift. It's going to be one of the two, and you can react to each of them. There is no reason to get hit by either of them from full screen, especially when you're playing someone like Shaolin, unless or Cage. You're a little bit frustrated, and you see it, and just kind of. You know, your kind of mind goes elsewhere. You try and jump on reaction to it, but your reaction is late. I mean, bear in mind, if you try and react to the uh, insect lift with that, a, a that jump, drop. 
that drop was where it all started as well. Absolutely. But I mean, let, let's not... And that was a fantastic read right there. Where he, he saw Kung Jin run and did the one 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 Because, I mean, you can run in, but I mean, if you're going to go for one of the 50-50 options, it's not as fast as your 2-2, uh, for example. And there you go, low health. Oh, that chip damage. Look at just the sheer amount she gets off it. This could have been a nice comeback potentially. Just nice corner positioning. It was a nice combo. Chunky 36% damage. But that delay wake up, that was it. As soon as you delay the wake up, that was it. Game over. I mean, that that, that, that really. I mean, it's it's getting a good read on the string, uh, making a whiff, standing up, and then just getting that whiff punish. Guaranteed. I mean, a down one's all it takes. That, that's all. We, I mean, you don't really need to overextend any more than just a low poke's worth of damage. Well, we said before the set started the mind game of beyond the game's mechanics. Now, let's add delayed wake up into account. Delay wake up is, as you might assume, when you can delay how long it takes you to get off the ground. Because if you just get, get hit by something, everything sort of makes you get up off the ground at a, a, a set time, really. You've got hard knockdowns, which are like, you're on the ground for quite a while. You've got a splat situation where you get like, you know, splat onto the ground, you sort of slide, and then you can tech roll and stuff. Um, or just standard knockdowns, just standard hit standard knockdowns. Off of most knockdowns, you can delay your wake up, so you get up at a different time. Why would you do that? To throw someone's game off, to throw someone's Oki, who's looking for ways to pressure you, looking to put strings on you on your wake up to make you block them. You delay your wake up to make those strings miss, to get up and punish them. But if they know you're going to do that, they just stand there. Once you've delayed your wake up, you can't wake up attack anymore. That option is taken from you. So you make the read, and it's up to them to respond, how are you going to get off the ground here? Well, it's a weird it's a weird situation, right? Because, I mean, sometimes when we've seen it, it's like, delayed wake up will kind of make or break a set, where sometimes the delayed wake up has been the only thing that person could Case have done. Case point, right there. That's the only thing you could have done, really, to kind of get out there and just kind of secure that win. Um, however, sometimes you'll delay wake up, and it's like, you should have wake up attacked, you know, or you should have tech rolled or something. Like it's, it's kind of, it does definitely kind of go both ways. But while we get our grand final set up, which is going to be STB Mr. Aquari on the winner's side and Born Through Ashes on the loser's side, we're going to throw over to social one more time to see basically what's going on in the next few weeks. Yes, guys. So basically in this exciting time leading up to the finals, if you want to keep up with everything and anything to do with professional Mortal Kombat, make sure to follow us on Twitter at ESL Mortal Kombat. You can use the hashtag MKX Challenger to a uh, have your input with everything that's going on tonight and also remember we have a weekly raffle we've got some lovely t-shirts up for grab tonight two of those so make sure you go over to esl.gg forward slash mkxcom to register there if you're lucky enough that you're able to go or you live in la and you want to get your hands on a ticket uh, to be there at the live finals you can go to esl.gg forward slash mkx finals uh, to grab your tickets there they're selling out quickly so make sure you go and do that back over to you two. Thanks very much. I mean, we're looking forward to finals. You guys are looking forward to finals. The players are looking forward to finals. Doc's looking forward to finals. Oh, especially Doc. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll know. We'll, we'll know who to expect there and who to see. I mean, obviously, if you guys want to get a chance to get those tickets, turn up. We'll watch some MK together. We'll hang out and all that good stuff. One more set to go today. We have grand finals coming up, which again is going to be Aquari, Mr. Aquari, the eternal Mr. Aquari with... I, I would think at this point, I, demo, 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 Sonia. Yeah, I, sure. I just, I just, I, I, I love the story of a player like Aquari, right? When he's come a long way. He has. I mean, like we've said many times before, and I'm sure you guys and girls at home watching remember as well, the game is over a year old now. And that's, that, that, that's a lot of time to put into the game. That's a lot of time to put your efforts in. And the guys that play this, no, you, you might just watch it and think, yeah, these guys, these guys are good, but, you know, they're... They're just good at MK, you know, that's what it's about. But it's not. It's They have dedicated so much of their of their time and the past year of their life to it. I mean, let's, let, let's look at the more, more notable players. Sonic Fox has won a, a like I said before, a life-changing sum of money. This, this kid has secured his future through competitive Mortal Kombat. Foxy Grandpa managed to leave a job he didn't enjoy to be a professional Mortal Kombat player. And for the last year of his life, he has safely secured himself a financial future through success in Mortal Kombat. And then you've got even the players that do it without the money in mind. The ones that use it as an opportunity to meet people, to, to make friends, to meet like-minded people that they will know for years and years to come. And it's all because they started playing MKX a year ago and decided to enter the Pro League. That's why we have the Challenger Cup, my friend, a way to introduce people to the world of competitive Mortal Kombat. But if you don't quite make the cut for the Pro League Top 8 every single week, you can still compete for cash. And in the Challenger Cup Finals, your reward is finally having the chance to play for that cut of the Pro League $1,000 every single week. 
So Born Through Ashes coming from the loser's bracket. This means he has to defeat Mr. Aquari twice, effectively. He has to knock Aquari into losers by beating him three out of five and then do it again. So if Born Through Ashes can win, the score will be reset to 0-0 and they will play once again. But Mr. Aquari, his reward of being from the winner's side is to win once. He has to win a three out of five set and he will be today's winner. A very early combo drop though, very unfortunate. Oh, the instant jump in, that's gonna be a conversion. I don't think I've ever seen a character get as many air-to-air -air conversions as Sonya Blade. This character is just built for air-to-air. -air. Oh, that read on the dive kick. That's retro, Mr. Aquaria. I love it. Well, it's an interesting thing. And again, we see it again where players will see the grenade and then get tagged by it afterwards. Gets the down one on hit, guarantees the throw, or at least goes for the throw, gives him some nice frames. Oh my god, that was a hard read on the wake-up grab, but Born Through Ash is waiting. Again, low poke into grenade is highly highly effective. Let's all him, that let's all the time let him live to reload before he finishes him off. Well, the thing is, in Season 2 Finals, we saw Scar do that all the time. Low poke into grenade because you think it's your turn to poke. You think it's your turn to press a button and then you get hit by a full combo. Oh, that must have been a bit of a mistake from a grenade. I think he quite expected that to hit the way it did. Oh, it's 50-50s of our own running in for the overhead. Oh, so unfortunate. Born Through Ashes needs a different answer for these grenades because that NJP is not working. Punish? No! Try to, but ever so slightly late on the uptick right there. Neutral Crouch tries to whip punish, doesn't quite get it. Oh, but Ashes is going to get a clean whip punish on the forward 1-1. One, one. Be burn into grenade. Nice, 39% corner BNB. Oh, a Craig goes to the stand and wake up completely uh, whiffs the puddle, actually. That, that was a very, that was an unconventional, but very interesting way to get around that insect puddle. But could that be an answer to this Oki game that Devorah thrives off? She needs that ball. She, 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 she wants that setup. She wants you blocking so she gets to continue a pressure on your wake-up. Oh. oh no, that could be curtains for Born Through Ashes. That was a um, very messy way to end that round. However, I'm sure he'll take it. I mean, that's it. If Aquari had kind of already won that round anyway, because I mean, he dropped the combo. I mean, it's a guaranteed combo. Anything would have done, uh, dropped it, but then got the kind of little sort of scrambling situation. And 10 respects. 10 respects. 10 respects. Now the thing um, is, it like, yeah. He dropped the combo, but he still won the game. So I don't really think he cares too much. However, those kind of scrambles can go either way. So I'm, I'm going to assume Born Through Ashes is just a straight up uh, Swarm Queen loyalist. I think if he had the chance to change, he would have done it by now. Um, especially considering he has so many games to win. I mean, like I said before in the CIS League, when you're fighting from the loser's bracket and your opponent starts taking games off you in the finals, that challenge of just taking off six games becomes a lot more intimidating because it's just getting harder for you because you have to win five. Like for example, Born Through Ashes needs to win six before Aquari wins two. And that's pretty unfortunate. But regardless, bum, no. bum, ba -da, um, as is the life in online tournaments, sometimes these connection issues can happen. We're gonna try and get them back in the lobby as soon as possible. Let's talk about that first game for a sec. So what we saw um, was a lot of kind of like more, what we almost always see with Demolition Sonya, which is people blocking the first part of the mix up and then the grenade hits them. Almost every time trying to jump, trying to press a button, Try and do whatever. The grenade comes out, you eat a full combo for your trouble, and that's it. It's it's not about punishing it as such, because a lot of the time, if you go for an armor- It's just about not getting hit by it, You, you need to get out, out of the way. That That's the most important thing about dealing with the grenade. You, you just need to not be where the grenade is when it explodes. I know that sounds really like obvious, right? But it's not, because if you try and use, for example, we saw Johnny Cage go for the meat by nut punch, the armor ticks or whatever, but the armor's gone by the time the grenade explodes. So as you- absorb the hit you get you trade with the grenade and just like that that that, that that's what's going to happen to you. you 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 don't get out of the way the grenade's still there you get your armor but then you get hit by the grenade anyway it's about moving from where the grenade's going to explode out of the way forward back whatever you just need to not be there when it explodes i think it's kind of trying to sort of reset yourself into that almost neutral situation i mean i know demo's going to have a, a good neutral with those grenades on deck but bear in mind she only has a good neutral when she has them ready and then the second she hasn't got them, it's kind of like an element of her where she has to reload, otherwise she's in big trouble. And then she's got bar and, and goes for the, the drone calls. But again, that's more of a, she's not going to do that in the neutral as such. She just wants to do that like for a setup or she wants to do it for combo purposes or if you're blocking to keep you blocking. Like she has a lot of utility and that sort of really goes down to, to what you were saying about how the character has been explored. It's kind of just the consensus for like season two, the first half of season two really, and a lot of season one was, Demolition's good, but without the grenades, it's useless. Without the grenades, it's it's lost all this. It's basically variation, Sonya. Finding ways to reload. But That's that was it. all about. It was all about getting that resource and the grenades back. And the Sonya community delivered. They 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 labbed it up. They looked for it, and just like that, we now have this crazy character that, in theory, has been like this for a while. I know Demo Sonya did receive a few changes early on in the game's life, but 
it really took exploring, and that's that's really the element of, of, of the beauty of characters having their own communities, is people really lab together and find this stuff. But it's not just characters, it's variations. You know, there, there, is, you know, there are people that specialize in one variation, so if there's anything that you need to know, you can go straight to that resource of players that use it, and there's all the information that you need. You know, Demo Sonia, everyone says, back in the day, you know, if she hasn't got reloads, if she hasn't got, you know, grenades ready to go, she struggles, but... I mean, that's a big part of playing Demo Sonya, right? Making sure you don't have to reload. You no, know, reload every single time it's guaranteed. There you go, gets a full jump in. Gets right on the 50-50, uses the grenades already. Two grenades used. Oh, and there's nice. a good hit confirm. Is Aquarius going to use the breaker? No, it's going to save the bar. It's a standard. Again, the standard corner BNB, a 39%. Oh, again, the wake up absorbs it with Born Thrashes. No fear. Goes in with it this time. Nice confirm. Not max damage, but gets something. Didn't have the stamina, so couldn't go for a cancel. Oh, catches the overhead as well. That's going to be big damage into the guaranteed round. I like that. Just use an overpositor just to get the increased meter build as well on the special move. Oh, Trista and the outstanding one doesn't quite get it in time. Oh, gets the clean jump in, but the low whiffs. Oh, there's the Antnia again. Doesn't get a full combo this time. Oh, and there we go. Catches the low as well. Here we go. Corner pressure. Knockdown. Safe. Really. Uh, that, that's right there. Safe. We, we talk about this all the time. Just the ability to make sure that you can reload safely, so you're not actually going to be in that negative situation, unless you're the one that gets punished. Oh, wake up grab. Wake up Mia burn grab. Risky stuff from Aquari, but gets it. Nice corner combo. Use the grenades. Use the bomb. Not quite sure if I agree with that. Doesn't even go for the reload. But oh, oh no! no. <laughs> Running straight into that low grenade. Fine. When the grenades fight back. One well, question is, I mean, he's having a much better time this match. He's having a. Oh no! And there's the instant dive kick. That's the good reactions you can really make the most of with the Sonya. It's just that 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 huge. It gives you a full jump in, right? So if you can react to the dive kick, a full jump in. Guess the punish this time. Meterless conversion. Good damage here. Nice 28% into setup. Ash just has to be careful. I mean, the lack of breaker. I kind of like that, actually. Yeah, the lack of stamina me meant that that kind of run and grab. I mean, the only thing you could really do to get around that was kind of maybe jump on prediction. Very Is that going to be the reload, though? Yeah, Born Thrash just consistently goes that down one. Moves out of the way of the spawn puddle. That could be game, and that is going to be curtains once again. Born Thrash Ashens goes down 2-0. But that's kind of like the answer to the insect puddle, especially at that kind of close range. Those advancing fast moves that, I mean, like, let's, let's not forget, the insect puddle is only going to track you at, at the point. When, when the insect puddle is used, it will track you at that point. If you are moving forward or away at any other point, it's not going to move. It's not, that, the insect puddle is not going to move. So fast advancing Combo strings or normals, special cancelled, are wonderful, wonderful answers for the puddle. Because if you see the puddle, it tracks you there, but then you're already in the middle of an attack that is going to advance, punish, and push you out of the way of the puddle and still allow you to full combo. So that advancing mid that Sonya has into grenade, I mean, the puddle doesn't hit her. She still gets a full combo, and that's how you handle the matchup. Matchup so again, we find ourselves onto the pit again. So you've got the corner escapes available. One of the reasons we this, this, this stage picked quite a lot is because there's the, the reliable corner escapes. But now Born Through Ashes, uh, Born Through Ashes even needs uh, six games in a row. He needs to get three to reset and then another three before Mr. Aquarius can get a single one. Oh, doesn't respect the setup. This is definitely a good way to get started. Hard knockdown into Puddle and into plus frames. Jailing as well. Oh no, drops the cancel. Live by the cancel, die by the cancel. In the words of Honeybee, I mean, if you're going to go for the cancels, you drop it. It's going to be really bad. Oh, there's that good arm break. Totally worth it for Aquari. Down on life, but no. Born through ashes is going to get a full confirm. Corner carry. That is death. Round one, born through ashes. I mean, a nice way to return, but this sort of leads us to the problem is born through ashes' uh, ability to really clutch it out. And oh, that, that seems no. to be his downfall. It's just the ability to really just. Just, just just, close out that final match, and he just consistently today hasn't been able to do it. There's that reader once again. Oh, jump back on prediction. That NJP was definitely a dive kick read. Oh, and another drop cancel. cancel. But I mean, if you drop your cancel when they block, at least you're still plus. But you're missing out on so much damage. Tries to anti cross up. Trying to anti cross up Sonya is a risky business. Oh, it's a dive kick. You can tell Crow was not ready for that to work. That's going to be corner repositioning. Aquari saving the bar. Oh, hang on a minute. Disrespecting the puddle again. Oh, uh -oh. no, that sucks. That sucks so hard. 
Doesn't opt to get the grenades back though. I wonder if that was a meter burn uh, flip kick attempt instead, just to get the damage. Oh no, just eating that regular, that meter burn projectile. So match point, tournament point, I should say, for Mr. Aquari. One round away from being your uh, your May Challenge Cup champion. Gets the grenade reload into a dive kick. Cool. That was a bluff. That was nice reactions. Really nice reaction to the dive kick. Seeing the string, we're punishing cleanly. Big damage. Doesn't get the final hit, which means he isn't going to be able to reload. This actually could be really bad for him. Nice. Gets the setup again. Mr. Aquari always holding up on wake up. It's not working out for him. Nice throw tech from one thrashes. Forward one. Tries to keep him honest, but there's the armor. Now here's the, the game changer. Aquari finally got the chance to reload. Whiffing the dive kick. Whiff dive kick down press. three. Oh my word. That's season one tech. Oh, corner pressure. This could be exactly what Board Thrashes needs to get started. Aquari has the bar though. Has to watch out for the armor. Morphe Spock and then he gets the grenade. Oh, there's the armor, gets out of the corner, gets a grenade reload, that's exactly what he did it for. Oh no, oh, gets a no. full punish! Full combo punish, running straight in, we talked about the tracking of the puddle, that is that! Ladies and gentlemen, one overhead is gonna be it. Whoa, no, no, wait, it out too! Oh. I, I was worried for a second. I was ready for that to come back. I was ready for Born Thrashes to get that hit, but Aquari, and just to clutch out, saw that it was getting up, timed his, again, it sort of goes to delay wake up, right? Sees that he's not delaying his wake up, Goes to the 50-50, guesses right, Born Through Ashes, goes down, props to getting second place and a very dangerous Devora, but Aquari is going to take it we, as we a grand champion. Devora. I mean, outside of the ESL Pro League in North America where Honeybee makes top eight, we just never see Devora. So huge props we bringing this We did see Zvi. We saw Zvi in, uh, in uh, NA, but that was that was Broodmother, right? So it's not the same. Not the same. I mean, it's you don't see enough. Devora is such a good character. In, in EU, like, absolutely not. Oh, we, we, have, we, like, we just don't see Devora in this part of the world. I, I, I believe that might even be the first time we saw Devora... Uh, basically, in general, I guess, across our league, season one, two, and three. All right, so let's have a quick look at today's bracket and just have a, a quick reiteration of how the matches went. Obviously, we know how the sets went, but let's look. Aster Born Born Thrashes, 3-2. Clutch, comeback, uh, a query, just a, a really nice, consistent way. 3-0 uh, over Aster Damazi in the finals, 3-0 over Born Thrashes. Mr. Aquari just took this tournament without breaking the sweat. And let's not forget the greatest combo of all time. Oh, my word. I, 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 I genuinely forgot about that for the split second. And then you reminded me, and now I'm happy again. That was terrific. It was everything that's, that's great about MKX in but, a single combo. But that's the kind of combo that you would have to lab, spend a long time in training mode refining it. Three tea bags, not four, because four doesn't give you enough time, knowledge, and the brutality to follow up. Oh, man. I'm, I'm still happy about that. Wonderful stuff. So, I do believe that about wraps things up for the evening. It certainly does our end. Don't forget, guys, stay tuned in a mere few hours. North America, or I believe if it's Challenger Cup, almost quite quite soon. But soon, North America North America will be doing their portion of this for Latin America and North America for the Challenger Cup. So I have been Ketchup. I have been Mustard. You've been watching the Mortal Kombat X Challenger Cup Finals. Thank you all for watching. Don't go anywhere. Mortal Kombat will continue later.